Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see how to solve the authentication problems when we access the GitHub server via the Git client. We can access the GitHub server using SSH as well as HTTPS. So here we can see some of the problems. So generally these will occur when there is a mismatch between a private key and a public key when we access via SSH or because of some misconfigurations when we create a personal access token or because of some required permissions were not given to the personal access token etc. So in the demo, we are going to see how these problems occur and also we would see how to solve the corresponding problems. Let us start. So for our demo, we have an example repository here. Let us try to access this repository first via SSH. So for that, let us click on this code. So we can click on SSH. So we can use this GitHub URL to access the repository and click on this. So for accessing the repository, let us use the git clone command. So let us execute this command. So now we can see that there is an error called at the rate of GitHub permission denied. Here we also get the fatal error which is saying could not read from the remote repository. So when we access via SSH protocol, so there should be a public key in the GitHub server corresponding to a private key which is present in the machine. So in this machine, we have to check our private key and public key. So here we have IDRSA and IDRSA public key. So this content should be copied to the GitHub server. So here we need to go to the settings. So here we have to select this link. And here we need to create a new SSH key. So we can give any title, my SSH. So here I have copied the content of public key. So click on add SSH key. So then we need to provide the password. So here we have added the public key. Now let us verify the clone again. So this time we are able to clone the remote repository successfully. So now we have seen this problem. So this problem occurred because there is no SSH public key corresponding to a SSH private key which is present in the Git client machine. So we have solved this issue by adding the public key to the GitHub server. Sometimes the same problem would occur when we regenerate the keys in the client machine but forgot to add corresponding public key in the GitHub server. So then to solve the same issue, we need to replace the existing public key in the GitHub server. Now let us try to access GitHub server via HTTPS protocol and let us see what problems can occur and how we can solve them. So to access via HTTPS, let us select the code here and click on HTTPS and we have to copy this URL. Let us clone the remote repository now. So now the clone is unsuccessful. Here we can see there are some messages. Remote support for password authentication was removed. So that means we should not use the username and password. So we have to use the personal access token for it. So now let us try to create a new personal access token. So for that we need to click on settings. So here we need to select developer settings. Click on personal access tokens. So we can create a fine grain token. Generate new token. So we can provide the expiry here. And let us generate. So we need to copy this token. So now we have generated the personal access token. So let us try to clone the repository again. So now it is asking for a new token. Click on the token here and add the personal access token. Click on sign in. This time it is saying the right access to the repository is not granted and we are unable to access the requested URL with an error 403. So that means we don't have the required permissions on the repository even though we created the personal access token. So let us try to provide the required permissions on the repository for the personal access token. So let me click on this token. So here we need to edit and we need to select corresponding repository here. So we have to select our repository. On this repository, let us try to provide the read permission. So for the contents, we need to provide the read only access and click on update. So now let us try to clone again. So let us enter the token. 
Now we are able to successfully clone the remote repository. Now we have got the authentication failed error. So this issue we have solved by generating a new access token and we have added the read only access for the repository. Now let us try to add some files and try to push the changes to the remote repository. Let us add this file. Let us try to push these changes to the remote repository. So now we are getting the issue write access to the repository is not granted. And also it is saying unable to access with the return error 403. That means we don't have the right access on the repository to the personal access token. So let us provide that. So let us edit again. So here we need to change the repository permission. The content instead of read only, we should provide read and write. Let us update the changes. Let us try to execute push command again. Now we are able to push the local changes to the remote repository successfully. So now we have seen this issue. Write access to the repository is not granted with a 403 error. So we have solved the issue by adding the write access for the personal access token on the corresponding repository. Now we have seen how the basic issues occurred when there is a mismatch between the private key and the public key for SSH protocol. And if we don't have a personal access token in GitHub for HTTPS, or if we don't have corresponding permissions for the personal access token in GitHub server. But there are some other instances we can get the similar issues. For example, for HTTPS communication, if the personal access token is expired, then also we will get the authentication failed. So for that, what we need to do, we need to regenerate the personal access token. If the personal access token is changed in the server, we have to update the personal access token in the client as well. If we don't update, again we will get the similar issues. So let us see this. For example, assume uh, my token is expired, so I am regenerating the token. So that means my token value is changed now. So I need to update the similar token in the client as well. So let us clone the repository again. So this time even though we have the personal access token in the remote server and also we have the corresponding permissions, the authentication is failed when we access the server. So this is because the personal access token, what we have in the server is not matching with the corresponding personal access token in the client. So we need to update the personal access token in the client as well. So to update the token, we have to see what is the credential helper we are using. So for that, we have to use git config command. So from this output, we have to note this value of credential helper. This can be a manager or a store or a cache based on the method we use when we set the credentials. If you want to know in detail about this credential helper, please go through the video in the description. So now we need to reset this value so that when we execute the git commands, for example, git clone or git pull, etc., then it will ask the credentials again. So first we'll unset the value, then again we'll set the value. So for this we can use git config command again. So then we have to unset the value of credential helper. So for that we have to use unset option. So let us execute this. So now it is unset. We can verify the same again. So now there is no key corresponding to credential helper. So now we can again set the value of credential helper. So we can set the value like manager or a cache or a store based on our requirement. I am resetting the value to manager again. So we have reset the value to manager. So we can verify the config list again. So now we can see the value as manager. So now let us clone the repository. So this time it is asking the value of the token. So let us put the latest value of the token. So now we have successfully cloned the repository. So this way if any tokens are expired or tokens are regenerated, we have to change the token at the client level. So this is one way how we can reset a value of personal access token at the client side. We also can get the third issue 
when we share the repository to the collaborators and the collaborator tries to access this repository. So let us see what kind of issue we get and how we can solve it. So for example, this is the repository. So for this repository, I have added a collaborator. So let us try to clone this repository using the second user. So here let us try to clone the repository with second user. So this is a Linux machine and it is asking the username. So let me give the second user. So let us enter the personal access token of the second user. So here the user 2 is getting the issue unable to access the repository with a code of 403. So let us verify the permissions for the personal access token of this user. Let us edit the permissions. So here we can set all the repositories and the user already has the read and write permissions for the contents. So let us update. So let us reclone the repository. So even the personal access token has the permissions, still it is getting unable to access with 403 error code. So that means there is a problem with the personal access token of this user too. So here, if you see the personal access token, there are two types of tokens, the fine grain token and classic token. So generally when the repository is shared with collaborators, they are not part of the organization. These fine grain tokens may not work. As of this recording, these fine grain tokens are not working with the collaborators who are not part of the organization. So to avoid this issue for the collaborators, so we have to create a classic token. So let us create the classic token. So let us select classic here. So here we need to select the scope as repo. Then we can generate the token. So we need to copy this token value. So now when we clone the repository using the collaborator, so we'll use this classic token instead of fine grain token which was generated earlier. So let us clone the repository again. So let us enter the classic token now. So now we are able to successfully clone the repository using the classic token of the collaborator. So maybe in future they will allow the fine grain tokens also to be used by the collaborators for accessing the repositories owned by other users. So in summary, here we have seen how we get different types of issues when we access the GitHub server from a Git client. So we have seen the permission denied with public key. So this error occurs when there is no public key in the GitHub server corresponding to a private key in the client or if there is any mismatch between the private key and public key. And we also have seen several cases for getting the authentication failed and also the error with 403 code with HTTPS protocol. And we have seen the cases for both owners and collaborators and we have seen how to solve the corresponding issues. I hope you like the content. If you like the content, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.